Hello, I'm Noah Lesman, and I'm a freshman here at Vanderbilt University studying medicine, health, and society. Now, a couple months ago, me alongside Aaron Akimi co-created an organization called the Vanderbilt Initiative for Public Health Equality with the goal of getting accurate and reliable information on COVID and the COVID vaccine to our staff. Now, we took our staff's questions on COVID and the COVID vaccine and asked them directly to our country's expert on COVID, Dr. William Schaffner. Would you mind giving a brief COVID update on how we're looking locally and across the country on the vaccine and on vaccination rates? Sure, glad to uh, do that, Noah. So uh, starting locally, uh, we're seeing still an uptick of cases. So that means that this virus, this COVID virus, is still spreading in our communities. It hasn't been dampened all that much yet, despite all the vaccinations that have taken place. We really do need to get more people vaccinated. And actually what's happening here is rather similar to what's happening around the country. We're vaccinating more people, but so is the virus out there making more people sick. You know, it's kind of in a race. We're trying to vaccinate more. The virus is infecting more people. And at the moment, the virus is still in the leadership. So we need to get more people vaccinated to get ahead of this virus so we can, what do we say? Flatten the curve, right? right? Reduce the transmission of this virus so that people won't be coming in to our intensive care units, our emergency rooms and the like. Now our Vandy staff is wondering which vaccine should they take? The one that's available to you right now. They're all equivalently effective. And we've given them all now in the millions of doses, the effectiveness in keeping you out of the hospital is 95%. It's stunningly effective vaccines. Some people are concerned about the ingredients of this vaccine. Can you talk a little bit about what goes into the making of the vaccine? The vaccines are, to make a very complicated story, very simple, highly purified. And they're tested very carefully by our Food and Drug Administration to be pure. And then, of course, they were tested in clinical trials to show that they are extraordinarily safe. The science behind the vaccine, that took 20 years to develop. We don't usually count that in. And then, of course, we had this new 21st century technology. A problem came along, COVID, and it was immediately applied. And people worked day and night. You know, under normal circumstances, you don't work on the weekends and you don't work at night and you do things in sequence. People work day and night on the weekends and we did certain aspects simultaneously rather than one after the other. That shortened the time frame. And so I can assure you, we shortened the time frame, but we cut no corners. And we've now given this vaccine to millions of people and their safety is undoubted. Right. What do you say to staff members who are worried about the side effects of this vaccine? You know, it's very usual. It's understandable that people are concerned when they hear about a new vaccine to be concerned about side effects. And there are some side effects to these vaccines. They're mostly local and transient. You can get a sore arm. You can get a rash on that arm. The day after you get vaccinated, you can feel kind of puny, you know, somewhat fatigued, not up to your usual strength. You may even have a degree of fever. Some people have kind of muscle aches. These things go away in about a day. Sometimes they may last two days. One of the things that most people don't know is that we have an extraordinary vaccine safety assessment system in this country. Any doctor or any patient who thinks they got vaccinated and has an adverse reaction afterwards can report it. And this information is evaluated on a daily basis by the CDC. And they found a needle in a haystack. This very rare clotting disorder that could be serious that was associated with an interesting phenomenon in your bloodstream. Those little elements we call platelets were very low. That's medical stuff, but it's a very, very unusual rare event. 
it occurs once for every million doses given. So it really is rare. A lot of people like the J&J &J vaccine because it's one and done, right? And a lot of public health people liked it also because you could handle it in usual refrigerator temperatures, which means that you could go out to people in the community, homeless persons. You could go into the homes of people who had disabilities and can't move out and you can vaccinate them. So it was really a very effective and very attractive vaccine to many people. We'd like to see it used again. So some of our staff members are limited and hesitant to take this vaccine because of their family holding them back. What do you say to these staff members and how they should put their families at ease about this virus? Well, the first thing is to respect their concern and say, we understand that and ask them specifically, what is it exactly about the vaccine you're concerned about? Or what is it that your family is concerned about? Is it a safety issue? Is it an effectiveness issue? Do you think we uh, created these vaccines too rapidly? There are lots of different questions and try to answer them and reassure them and not only give them the facts, but make them feel comfortable and reassured that this is a good thing, not only for themselves, but for everybody around them. And on that subject of family, there's some women especially that are concerned about the fertility aspect of this vaccine. What do you have to say about that? You know, I'm, I'm quite concerned because this is a common question and there's so much nonsense about this on the internet. So let me try to say it very clearly. This vaccine will in no way interfere with a young woman's reproductive capacity. So women who are thinking about becoming pregnant or may be becoming pregnant in the future who are pregnant or who are breastfeeding, it's safe for all of them to get the vaccine. That's absolutely well established by the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. They endorse giving the vaccine, as does the American Academy of Pediatrics. You can't do better than that. So now, where can people go who are now willing to get this vaccine? Where can they go to get this? They can get the vaccine right here at Vanderbilt. We're providing it, but there are any number of community locations where they can get it too. So if they're if these locations are close to home, they can get the vaccine there also. Will people be required to wear masks after receiving the vaccine? Uh, for a period of time after receiving the vaccine, we'll all have to keep wearing our masks. And there, there are several reasons for that. One is there are a lot of people out there who are still not vaccinated. So the virus is spreading. These are fabulously effective vaccines we say they're 95% effective. I didn't say 100%. So there's a small chance that even though you're vaccinated, if you encounter the virus, you could still get sick. You're gonna get less sick, but nonetheless, we wanna protect you completely. And so it's still important for a period of time for all of us when we go outside, do the social distancing thing and wear the mask. Once enough people have gotten vaccinated, then the all clear whistle will blow and we can take off our masks and go back to what's near normal. At what vaccination rate or percentage would you say that we can go to this normal level? Well, all of us in public health have our fingers crossed. We would like to get the level of adults vaccinated up to 80%. Why does it have to be so high? That's because this virus is so contagious. The more contagious the virus, the higher the proportion of people in the population that has to be vaccinated for us to control it. And this virus, and you've heard about these variants that are going on, you know, like they're cousins to this main virus. Some of them are even more contagious than the parent. And so another reason to get vaccinated because the vaccines do protect against those and also to get more and more people vaccinated because they are very contagious. And you mentioned these variants. Does the vaccine protect against these various forms of the virus that will be forming in the future, presumably, and are forming now, potentially? So there are 
there's one dominant variant that's out there now. A variant is like a cousin to the original virus. It's more contagious. We call that the British variant. So it spreads even more readily. The vaccine does work against it very effectively. There's one guy out there that started in South Africa. That's pretty different from the main virus and our vaccines are only partially effective against it. Fortunately, it's very rare in the United States, but we're thinking ahead. The scientists have already created a second kind of vaccine that could be used against the South African variant if we needed it. We're not there yet, but we're thinking ahead. What are some of the long-term effects of this vaccine? That's a major concern that we've had amongst much of our staff here. So if we look at all the vaccines that we use, it's very, very interesting that if there are side effects, adverse effects associated with the vaccine, 99.9% .9 of them occur within two months of giving the vaccine. It's really hard for me to consider a long-term effect of a vaccine that might be adverse. So we really know 99.9% .9 of what's going on with these vaccines right now. After all, we've given them now in millions of doses, not only here in this country, but around the world. Now, the other question is, how about the good effects? How long does the protection last? <laughs> Stay tuned. We have good information that the protection lasts at least six months, but the clock's still running. Remember, we're kind of building this plane as we're flying it. We have to keep watching that and we'll update you as we go along. So at least six months and surely longer. And what are we looking in terms of a return to normalcy? When do you foresee us achieving that 80% that you've talked about previously? If people come forward and be vaccinated, it's a big if because there's a lot of hesitancy out there, but if we could get there by the middle to the end of the summer, and that would be great. We will have vaccines tested. We'll know that they're safe, and then we can be delivering the vaccine to our entire population, preschoolers all the way up to senior citizens. Another common question that we've seen from our staff is that they've gone a year now without contracting COVID. Why should they vaccinate now? Well, Good for them. I'm so glad they have escaped it. But this virus is still out there. It's still spreading across the country, it, including right here in Nashville. It's putting people into the hospital newly every single day. Increasingly, we're seeing younger adults in our hospital. So you're less likely, but it still can get you and can get you seriously. So you want to be protected for yourself. But the other is that even though you're infected and if you don't get sick, you can spread the virus. You can be a dreaded spreader and give it to other people. Nobody wants to do that. So there are two good reasons why even young, strong people should be vaccinated. Protect yourself and protect those around you. And so do you have any closing messages that you'd like to share to our staff who will be watching this? To me, it comes down to something very simple. COVID is bad. Vaccines are good. Let's all get vaccinated to protect ourselves, our families, and our whole communities. We can do this. Dr. Schapter, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Good to be with you.